keep thinking that I could have done something, but now I'm left with an empty. Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are back with another five creative ways to use a mask. Oh, please, not the face mask joke again. All right, well, if you haven't seen my first video on five ways to use a mask, then you should definitely check out that video first as I start with the easier mask and then I break down the process fully. However, if you've watched that video already, then let's jump into this part two. So in this video, I filmed some of the clips myself. However, there are some clips I just didn't have the time to get. So all of my stock footage and video overlays are from Envato Elements. I'll show you more about that as we get into the tutorial. All right, here we go, number one, and that is the reflection mask. Okay, so here we have a girl working on her computer. We wanna make it look like she's looking at this code right here. So I'm gonna grab this overlay. It's on black, so we're gonna to go to the blend mode and click screen, and that will make it transparent. And bring the opacity down because we don't want the intensity to be too high. Here is the effect over top of her eyes, closer shot. And now we want to make it actually reflecting off of her glasses. So in this case, we're going to get the overlay, adjust the size to where we want. And here we go, the usual masking procedure applies. We're just going to cut around her glasses. And by right clicking on the control point, we can select smooth. So it's not such a hard line. Now we're going to select the control points keyframe and along our clip, we're just going to highlight them all and adjust them so they're roughly reflecting off her glasses. Nothing too fancy here, just adjust them really quick. Now we can adjust the feather to make sure they stay inside the frames. And there we go, really cool effect. Number two, and that's the eye mask. Same things apply, however, we're going to use a shape mask and adjust the size down accordingly. Now we're gonna convert it to points and you'll see there it changes from shape to draw. And now it's just like a normal draw mask. And adjust it down just like we would normally do frame by frame. Now, here's the difference is when we open back up, I want to have a new effect. So I'm going to bring in this fire overlay. I want to bring it underneath the clip and we're going to mask onto the fire. All right, so we're going to continue as normal like we have done before. However, there's going to be one small difference with this one. When the eye opens up, I want to adjust the opacity of the overlay. So by clicking the first frame, then dropping the opacity all the way down, hitting the keyframe, then go to the last frame, and then bring the opacity back. And that will slowly fade on the fire and kind of mix it with her eye. Now I'm going to proceed as normal, as we do with every other mask, frame by frame. As her eye opens up, we're gonna make the adjustments. But you'll see as I'm working through these key for, uh, control points that the fire effect is slowly fading on. Also, when I'm adjusting to really perfectly fit her eye, you'll notice how important those long sliders are for the smooth control points. Very handy for matching perfectly. All right, so just like the previous tutorial, we want to push through the eye to reveal what's underneath. So we go somewhere around here, then we want to click the keyframe right here, and at the end, we want to change our canvas size and the zoom all the way through. Now you'll notice something about the way, the way this looks, really jerky. You see how it's really sharp jerky, not very gradual, looks kind of abrupt right there. In Final Cut Pro, there's actually no built-in way to make that smoother, unfortunately. However, there is a plugin called Add Motion, and it's perfect for these types of scenarios. Okay, let's look at the default parameters. Right away, remove that 18 from the A position, set it to zero. You'll notice at the top, it's going from A to B, and let's change the B position and scale that all the way to the end because that's where our clip is going to end up. It's gonna start at A, end at B. And we wanna change the takeoff point to Expo and the landing to Linear. Expo means exponential smoothness, I guess, for lack of a better word. Now you'll notice it kinda of looks super weird and that's because our clip duration is around four seconds but if you look on the duration here, it's one second. So if we bring our duration right down to the end, right there, around four seconds, the length of the clip, it will smoothly zoom and take the duration of the clip. Now you'll notice it doesn't quite zoom out to the end, so we're gonna have to change the master scale. So we'll set a keyframe and then just bump up the master scale a little bit but at the end, and then that will zoom straight through the eye. Okay, let's take a look at this final result. So that is a much smoother look than that initial one we saw. 
We can also go back and change the takeoff point to ease two. It's a very slightly quicker zoom in than Expo, but also a really great effect. Mask number three, and that's a clone mask. Very easy to do. Put your camera on a tripod, film yourself doing different things in various locations, and try not to overlap. However, in this video, we are going to overlap the book as I throw it, and I'll show you how to edit around the intersecting items. So we're gonna get those three clips, stack them on top of each other. The second clip, we're going to bring the opacity down so we can see the underlying clip. And there's a bit of interaction there with the book dropping and swiping. If we hit V, we can enable and disable the clips. But now we're gonna make a new layer for the book. So we're gonna copy and paste the bottom layer, Control C, Control V, bring it up th to there. And now we're just going to find the spot where the book is flying. So I wanna cut that little section there where the book is actually flying through the air. We're gonna bring it over top of both clips and put the draw mask tool on. And then as it's flying, we're just gonna mask out the book frame by frame. This is normal masking procedure, but you'll see how it crosses over into the other frame. So that's why we need to bring in an additional layer. Okay, our book masking layer is done. Now we need to draw a mask on the second layer, just like so. And you'll notice that when the book drops, there's a book already there prior to me grabbing it. So we just need to make sure that that book is eliminated before it drops down. Now the last part is once the book is thrown and I grab the book, it's still there. So all we need to do is just go to the point where it lands and then we're gonna set our control points there. So set the set keyframe control points, drag it off and then as I grab it, it should disappear. Boom, quite smooth. All right, so now let's hit V to enable our top layer. Standard masking around the top layer. I'm not really doing anything in that top layer, just kind of playing with the surfboard. Oh, boring. Ooh. Finally, we're gonna highlight them all, new compound clip. Now we're gonna make our canvas size smaller and then adjust the scale. Now we're just gonna play around with the frame. So by hitting the keyframe over here, let's just play around with that frame, moving it around as we move down our clip. And like we've done in many previous tutorials, we're gonna use our handheld effect, drop it on, and here's what it looks like all together. Looks like a nice shaky cam with three of us in the frame. Looks pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna show you one more idea, but this is even with a mask. Let's go on the rooftop. Here we go. Now by now you should have an idea of how to do that, but I found my smoke explosion from Envato Elements. So I just type that in and click on the smoke that I like. I like this particular one. Just sample it right here. Looks good. And also I want the sound effect, I download it first, and then I want the sound effect for the disappearing kind of poof sound. So I type in poof, sample some. I like that one. So I'll hit download. And for each download, it will write a specific license. Next one, this is a sky replace. And again, I found this stock footage from Envato as well. So I just go to stock video, type in beach backflip, and there's the clip we're using for this one. So I sample it like that, download. I'm using it for this masking tutorial. So that's the license, click download. And let's get something else. We have this girl kind of raising her arms at the beach, a boring sky, we wanna replace it. So we'll download this one as well. All right, we've got our clips here. We'll start with the girl raising her hands. So we're gonna copy and paste the clip, put them on top of each other, hit V to disable the top clip. On the bottom one, we are going to type in here. Now we will find the Luma here. Drag it on top of a bottom clip. Go over to the inspector menu, film strip. We're going to be playing with these Luma sliders, but first we wanna to go to the matte view right here. And the objective of dragging these sliders is to make the sky completely black and the girl and the ground completely white. So it will be keying out the black area and keeping everything that's white. So we'll do the best we can there. That looks like it's sort of the best I can. Now in the matte tools, you fill holes and that will make it much better. We don't need to worry about the bottom part being black as we'll mask that part out. So let's re-enable the top clip by clicking V. 
we will go to our shape mask under effects, drop it on top. Let's change up it more like a square. Good. Bring it down. Oh, change the canvas size to 50 so we know what we're working with. Drag it down. And let's adjust our mask to block out all of the black area that's on the ground. All right, let's get our time lapse sunset clip that I also got from Mbato Elements. Drag it underneath both clips. And we're going to click our middle clip and then go back to the composite view. And that will show what's keyed out there. So it looks pretty good. Let's fit it to the screen size. Although the colors are pretty whack. So we'll have to color grade that clip to kind of match the sky. Now I'm going to dedicate the next entire tutorial to color grading. So I'm just going to rush through this process. All right, let's adjust the background so it looks a little bit better. And one final tip for sky replacing is make sure the sky and the subject has a big contrast. Okay, here's our next clip of the guy doing a backflip on the beach. And you'll notice it at his feet right up there, there's a bit of a white line. And the way we fix that is by adjusting the edge distance. Now, when we play too much with that, it does affect the other things in the shot, as you can see that there. So it's never quite perfect, but we just kind of find a medium ground what we're happy with. And here's the final result. So like I said before, practice lots, and you'll kind of see what clips work and what clips don't work. Have fun with it. Last but not least, our 3D title mask. So let's get the 3D title, drop it over top of our clip, the custom 3D title. And we're going to put in Prague, because I don't know where this is, but it kind of looks like Prague. And then we'll go to 3D styles. And for this one, let's just select carved wood. And we'll go down to, we'll drop it down low here onto the road. We'll adjust the style or the substance. We'll make it um, generic. And then we'll change the lighting to diagonal left. So it's kind of a top left light. Now we're going to copy and paste this title there because we're going to make the second one act as a shadow. So let's just move that. And I make a mistake here. I go into the distortion and watch me struggle here as I try and make a shadow. And it keeps moving when I push it back. So after a bit more playing, I found something that works, but eventually we need to go into the rotation tool. So I'm going to first drop the opacity down to make it look more like a shadow. And then I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to go to color, change it to gray. And now at rotation, this is where I should have gone in the first place, up to rotation. And that actually flattens it to make it look like a shadow. So that's what we should have done in the first place. And then you can distort it after if you need to make it on an angle. But that's the rotation that you, you want. Now I'm just going to scale it to fit accordingly. And there we go. We have a pretty decent looking shadow for Prague. So let's just make that a compound clip so they're together all in one clip. And now we are going to make this lady right here walk in front of the words. This is going to take a very long time to draw a mask over top of. So I'm going to put it in like 20,000 times speed and just fly through it. So here it is. This took me a long time and it will take you a long time too. But I think the final effect is pretty cool and it was worth it. So let's take a look at the final effect. Not bad. However, there are like black lines on our legs. So let's adjust the feather and the fall off. And that will take care of that. So let's see now what it looks like. Wow, looks cool. The text is sitting right on the road. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this video gave you some editing inspiration. Because my goodness, I know that editing can be a drag sometimes. So if this video did give you some value, then smash like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell because it really does help out the channel. And if you notice, it was really echoey in my last video and I got a comment saying, improve your audio. So I brought the mic closer to me. So I'll see you next week with better audio.